All right. <clears throat> I love that the first thing I do on camera is clear my throat. I'm... <laughs> Mm. You guys know what tonight is? It's Friday Night Freestyle! My goodness, <clears throat> we're gonna have a lot of fun. And it's gonna be a quick little painting on an 18 by 24. We're just gonna use two, count them, one, two colors, right? It's gonna be fantastic. So, let's get a little, you can get a two inch brush, you can get a one inch brush, whatever brush is more comfortable for you. You guys are gonna tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? And it's going to be a fantastic time. Now, since we're only going to use black and white, what are we going to start with? A little bit of black on our brush. Just a little bit, though, right? You don't want to have a whole lot. So tell me where you're watching from, guys. What's your favorite sandwich? What did you just have for dinner? Have you had dessert yet? What's your favorite dessert? I'm hungry, guys. I didn't eat dinner last night. I had like three packs of M&Ms today. I had to go spend like six hours at the car dealership getting a car. And oh, it's just the most gorgeous car. Woo! Love it. It drives like a dream like a cloud. It's a Kia. Oh, don't even ask. Don't even ask. I forgot what the heck. It's a, it's a little Kia SUV. And I forget what it's called. A Solus? Solus? I think it's a Solus. I think it's a Solus. That might be what we have to name the painting tonight. By the way, you guys get to name this painting and you get to purchase it before I even finish. If you start to like how it looks, make sure you get over to my Etsy store, paintwithjosh.etsy.com and purchase this painting before it can even be completed. Then you can decide what the title is. You can add your bird family to it. I'm the only artist that adds your family along with my signature in their paintings. It's fantastic. So go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com, okay? Everybody head over there. We're gonna get a little bit more of our black. Uh, not too much. A little bit more in the corners, maybe a little more underneath here, just to dump it down a little, get it off of the brush, leave this little light area in the center, and then we're going to go start to blend it, right? All this stuff, you can see, it's getting lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter as it blends down, right? Because there's a bunch of Bob Ross liquid white on the canvas, right? Across the whole canvas, you get all this liquid white, and that way it, it blends nice and simply, right? If you're watching this and you're going, I tried that with oil paint. It did not blend like that. It was not that easy. It's because you probably were missing a vital part, right? You can either use liquid white or liquid clear, the other Bob Ross brand, uh, or linseed oil as a replacement. But if you use a clear linseed oil, your colors are going to be very dark up there, right? You're going to have to mix more on your palette before you go up to the canvas. So that's why I like using that Bob Ross liquid white. It's just fantastic. Now, I've told you about all the paint that we put up on the canvas, right? That's our P1, our first P of Paint with Josh, the amount of paint that we put on the canvas. Now, who knows the second P, P2. Does anybody know the second P while I sit here and work on this little, little bit of blending? And I'm going to wait until somebody says it in the comments. you got to tell me the second P of Paint with Josh, otherwise we're not continuing. We'll not continue until we get the second P. Let me see if we got any comments yet. Pop, 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 pop. Pressure from Tink Tink. That's right. Okay, I guess we can continue. With the amount of pressure that we have on our canvas, we decide how far the paint stretches across, how dark it is, how light it is, how much we're going to blend it, how light it's going from you know dark to light, what the, what the streaks are like, what your brush strokes are there, how much paint, how much pressure, right? And if this is your very first time, it might not come out perfect because you also need that third P of paint with Josh. Does anybody know the third P? We've talked about the first P. And we've talked about the second P. Now the third P comes, and that's the final P. And it's almost the most important. Does anybody know? Come back here. We'll check the comments. Let's see it. Let's see it. Thank you, uh, thank you, Elaine. Uh, thank you, Beth. There you go, Peggy Sterling over here on YouTube. Paint pressure and practice. That's how you do it. Right? All depends on our practice. All right? If you've never practiced, how can you expect it to look perfect on your very first go without even practicing? It doesn't make any sense. So we're going to just use a little bit of black there, wash our brush off, get all that darkness off of our brush, and then come in to the old beater bucket. If you've never seen a beater bucket and you wonder how we clean the brushes, it looks a lot like this. It's a five-gallon bucket with a golf ball basket down in the bottom. And that golf ball basket just gives me a couple surfaces and a little, little area I can to beat the devil out of the bristles of the brush and have it contained inside the bucket. Keep your house clean, keep your wife or your husband happy, right? Gotta keep them happy. Happy spouse, happy life, right? So now we've taken all of our black paint, we've blended it all out. Let's grab a little of our white, come over here, 
just like that on us. And a little fan brush. This fan brush was sent to us by Bram from uh, Paint with Bram. Sent us this Bob Ross fan brush, and it's fantastic. Like, this is one of the old school ones, I think, before they went and changed everything. And it's so nice compared to the newer ones, right? So let's save this little light area that we have up here and just kind of write in cursive. So we come down, pop, 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 kind of highlighting that little bit, accentuating that bit of brightness, dumping a little bit of darkness onto our canvas, pushing it over here, mushing it, getting it all crazy. Make it worse. Put it down here. Who cares, right? It's just a cloud. It's just a cloud off there. Nothing says that you can't have your cloud look exactly like that because there's no shape for a cloud. We come up here with our one inch or two inch brush. I'm using the two inch today. And we're going to start to blend it. And we're just going to go in circles. And just based off the pressure and how many times I practice this, I can feel what the brush is doing. I can feel how it's mixing, how it's dragging on the paint, right? And you go until you think that it looks good. Pop in our little bit of cloud back there, back and forth, bam, just by a little mixing, little mess. That's all nature is, little mess. And then we can soften it, right? Say we want a little soft. Let's take some of the dark paint from up here on both sides. What if we just popped in a little flat shadow back there and then worked it in a couple times. Just add three, four more little layers of detail in there just by adding a little bit of shadow, right? Very cool. Now we're gonna come back. We're gonna get a darker colored brush, just like this. Go into our black paint, but we're not gonna get so much. I wanna have so much paint. So let's grab a little bit of white just to help blend it down a little bit. I wanna have it do, uh, be too bright. And again, it's gonna to blend together up here. So we came across this one like this. So let's go across this one like this. Just pow, right through all that bit. Crazy bit of shadow come flying through our sky back in here. And all we're using is a little bit of black paint, allowing it to mix in with all of the white that we covered the canvas with, right? You gotta have that Bob Ross liquid white. Otherwise, it's gonna be very hard to blend all these thick paints across a dry canvas. Bob always said you'd be in Agony City. I remember that line from this show. You'd be in Agony City if you tried to do that because these paints don't wanna blend across a dry canvas. We're painting the wet on wet technique. They wanna go against a wet canvas. And crisscross, pew. crisscross, that's where the treasure is, right back there. Now, we're gonna come in with a lot more white paint on our brush than we had before because we have a lot darker area that we're gonna be bouncing it off of, right? And it's gonna mix in with all that darkness. So, we're gonna take a lot more paint and come in. Let's do one more little bit, guy, this way. Right up in there. We don't have to cover all of the dark, right? Don't need to. Don't have to, don't need to, don't want to. If you cover up all the dark, what was the point in putting it back there? Don't cover it on the top, don't cover it all on the bottom, right? And again, just based off of our pressure and off of our little circular motions and how many times we let that light paint mix in with the dark paint that's underneath, Right, just like that, making a literal mess. If you were to do this with acrylic paint, it would look so nasty. Just because acrylic's too thin and and uh, and like I don't know, just too wet to have it work. You gotta have these big, thick, dry paints. Now, if you want to get the same stuff that I can get, you can go check out my Facebook page and my YouTube channel. On both of them, the very first video you see pinned to the top of the page is the supplies video. So if you're wondering what it's gonna take to start painting like me. There's a supplies list in that video. It tells you about how much everything's gonna be, where you can get it from, and it's got a bunch of affiliate links in there. So wherever you get from my Amazon affiliate shop, I do make a little bit of money from a couple pennies. Just like that, that's a cool little bit of mountain back there. Right, we're gonna try to do this painting with about three or four brushes, that's it. Two colors, three or four brushes. We're gonna come back to our same dark brush that we just made that dark cloud with. I'm gonna keep a, a light brush. So we've got a white brush for, a, for white paint, and a red brush for dark paint. Just like that. So we're coming back to our dark. We're gonna go back into our black. Little bit, right? Little bit of paint on the brush. It's just like the teeniest little bit out here on the end because we're trying to be far away. And of course, we could sit here and mix it and try to make it less and less, but the brighter that you make it back here, it's also going to brighten up here. So let's get it back to where we had it. Just like that. We're gonna allow all this liquid white that's on our canvas, that, that wet base coat that's on the canvas, that's what's gonna help us. So let's go back here. Maybe we had a little bit slide off, right? And if it's too, if you come up here, it doesn't stand out away from your dark color. Go back and make your brush a little bit darker. I got these little flat top mesas that live out here. Just gorgeous. Slide it down. Very neat, very soft, right? All you gotta do, let's try to do it with the two inch brush. See if we can be an OG right here. Slide it back. All I'm using is the corner of the brush. I'm not using the whole two inches. I'm just using this bit right here. Right, size matters. You don't need the whole two inches right here. We're gonna come back in here, we're gonna slide it down. And the more that we slide it, you'll see 
the more and more and softer and softer and softer it's going to get until eventually both of these colors will be the same and it won't be standing out anymore because it's constantly mixing in with that white that's underneath. A little bit of a downward dri a J stroke like that. I paint with Josh, so we make J's. Always making J's over here. And just like that, you got this far off little bit of Mesa flat top. Doesn't have any detail to it, just a little bit of difference in color. Dark, light, dark. A little bit of difference back there is all you need. All right, come up here. We're gonna make the top of it. We'll give it a few more little details by adding a little bit of darkness, just then let it fall down in little different areas, just like that. A little bit. Little teeniest little things. Boom. Don't want to put too many on there. And if it starts getting too thick like that, go back with your brush, couple strokes, very light pressure, pulls it down. Now we allow it to go from dark and it gets lighter and lighter and lighter as it mixes with all this white. And that's a good thing because now we're going to load up a little bit more dark paint onto the brush, that black color, and go up a little bit higher. And then we'll go like this. Slide it down. That's all you got to do. A little bit of craziness. A little bit of detail, slide this guy down like that, and allow it to be darker on the front, lighter in the back. So already we're in good shape, because it's darker on the front and lighter towards the back. Now we're gonna come up here with our two inch brush, just pull it down, slide it off, all of our pressure. I could take this paint and slide it all the way off the canvas, but do I wanna do that? Mm, probably not. It's probably gonna be too far if I went and did that, right? So you have to decide, what are you gonna do? What's it look like? Look, there's a little split right here. Well, that gives me an idea that we could put another little ridge right there, just random, uh, naturally, have a little bit darker ridge, a little bit darker paint, right? and it'll start to slide off, and then I'll show you how we'll make it all blend together. Bam, 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 bam. This one starts sliding backwards. Now we can take some of this paint and just very lightly smooth it to wherever we want, pulling it down, making it soft, Blending it away into whatever background color, you know what I mean? It starts to disappear. It doesn't have to be perfect. You want it to be all foggy and mysterious at the bottom. You don't know what's going on, right? And again, we've got to come in with one more little bit. So we'll come back up here. Just like that. A little bit more paint on the brush. Come in from the side, a little bit higher, into that light area, and then down and through, right? That's why we allow it to go back to that light area so you can pop in your next little bit. Doesn't even have to be the straightest thing. A little bit of humps and bumps in this guy, put them out there. All up to you, right? Now, without adding any more paint and allowing it to mix in with that white, we're allowing it to get lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter as it goes back. And you can see that bar back there. Does that bar ever give you guys trouble? You wanna see, see a quick trick on how to get past that? What I do anyway. I'll take my hand back behind the canvas. I'm gonna put it in between the canvas and that bar. And I'm gonna push out a little bit towards us over here. All right, so you can see the canvas moving. Now, I'm not all the way in between. I don't wanna stretch the canvas so much. I'm just giving it a little bit of pressure and that way it can't push back against that bar. And then you can literally blend those little horizontal swipes away till they were never there, right? We normally don't do it with our fan brush. We normally do it with a bigger brush, but all about the amount of pressure. You get to decide what yours looks like. You don't have to just be stuck with it because you know, you can see that little bar, and you're like, oh, I, I love the painting, but I can't get over to seeing that little bar, and it really bugs me, and I don't know what to do, blah, 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 blah. You don't have to do that. There's always something Josh can teach you. Little things here and there. All right, why don't we pop this guy off this way, and go all the way over to the side, just get lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter, just a little flat top. And because we started lower, like little steps, and they become longer and longer and longer, as long as it's going lower and higher at the same time, that means it's getting closer to us just perspective-wise, right? Now, what does our little bit look like? All depends on how you pull these little strokes, where you decide to put your little shadowy area, all sorts of little stuff in there, right? And you can always go back, get a little bit more dark paint. Here we had a couple more details, a couple more, actually, maybe it was really dark back here, so we're adding more paint and more, much more pressure. Really trying to darken it. Have maybe one more come back in here, just attached to this guy, just like that, right? Come back over here. Lightly pull it down. I want to have that little difference. Maybe there's a little ridge. Maybe there's a little something. Pull it down. Blend it out soft. Pull it from the side. You can do whatever you want, guys. It doesn't have to look like mine. It can look like whatever. Maybe come up to it like this. Like it's a wave. <laughs> right? Just like that. You don't have to worry so much is my point. Everybody worries too much. Too much worrying. Stop worrying so much about it. It's just a little painting, right? What happens if we mess it up? We just grab another canvas and start over. Nothing really to stress about. 
I like the, the one, the, the post I see most often is the, the one that says, oh my God, my clouds came out so perfect, I'm afraid to go put anything on them now. I don't want to do the mountain because it's going to ruin my clouds. Hey, that's, that's not good. You got to, you got to ruin those clouds. You got to hide your most favorite part of those clouds has to go back behind a bit of something in the front. It helps add depth and distance to your painting. And it's just awesome when everything works out good. There we go. Now, what we're gonna do here is throw off a little bit of a trail way off there. And then we have to decide, right, by pulling out this guy, a little bit of pressure. Remember, you wanna leave it from, and even though this isn't dark, it's still darker than down here, right? We go from dark to very, very, very light, and then dark to light, 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 dark to light, 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 right? La, 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 light. There we go. Take this guy, push him back up. We want to have a little walkway off the side here, so we don't want to have too far down. You know what I mean? A couple little things here and there. Little bits, little shadows, little streaks, and then we go back and we add light as our little highlights. You can really just hide and, and really show a lot of stuff. It's really cool. Excellent. Okay, now, I want to come back here, a little bit of black on the brush, because we only have two colors, right? Now, let's say our, our, our little bit kind of got lost way back behind this hill, so then we came back. And then we're just going very softly, back and forth, little straight lines. Maybe we hit over here. Our guy had to come back. But before we come back too far, let's take this guy back here and add a little bit of paint. All right, we'll have a whole other little thing, a little uh, bit of dimension as we come in here. Take the two-inch brush again, just so we stay with three tools. Just like that. See how it's a little bit darker? but it's very similar to our sky color back here. We want it to be much, much, much darker than that. So let's go back, let's get some more black paint. Throw it on there. All right, now we're gonna come underneath this guy. We're gonna let it really blend, but first we gotta make sure it's dark under there. All right, much darker than up here. This is getting more light. This is down in the shadows. Way down deep in the shadows. Now we're turning like that, we get this cool little bit, it's like it falls off into nothing. We could add a bit of cloud come in. We could do all sorts of stuff, guys. Literally, we could have it turn like this, just based off our directional pulls of the brush. Now we've made it more shallow. You can do different things, different little things. Now let's get some more of that black paint, because that's all we got, black and white. All right, we're gonna come over here, and we had our guy come down, so maybe our little bit comes back out there into the lighter section. See how it's gotten a little bit lighter? And we pulled it down from back there so it was dark and into the light, right? Even over here, we should have done a little bit better. There we go. So now it's, even though it's a little bit darker than what is up here, now it's extra darker because it's got that little bit of our path that came out there. And maybe our path starts coming in here. We can start sliding it up our little bit of, of uh, rock. Little mesa top, slide it over there, slide it over there. A little bit of darkness is all we need. And then we'll go back and cover over it with a little bit of light. And that path goes way off back behind the edge of this ridge and it just falls off into nothing. All right, our little bit back here, just little smiley faces. You can start to build your little path towards you. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and bigger right? And then really dark down here around the front. And then we can just walk right into this scene. It's gonna be so cool, guys. It's gonna be so neat. Now, very softly with this brush because I want it to spread a little bit, but not so far, right? You have to be careful with how you pull it. Look at that, ah, just that little bit of, of brightness out there. A little bit of darkness in here. Let's slide it back, start sliding it up our little mountain like that. All depends on the pressure, right? How much pressure are you putting on there? It's a very soft painting. There's not a lot of texture, no texture, basically. No texture at all in this painting. Very soft. Dang, just like that, very cool. Like we've left our little ledge that we can come in, we can do all sorts of stuff with, right? So let's go back in and we'll get some more black paint, just black on the brush. It's already, or the mountain mix, whatever you got. A little bit darker. That way it stands out away from the color that's back there. And then based on our directional swipes with our brush, we can start to rotate that canyon wall just like that. You want to bring it in a little further? Bring it in a little further, right? But you got to go back here and make those swipes also make sense because everything's got to make sense in this crazy world. There we go. Like that, that cool little canyon wall out there. That's awesome. And that is awesome. Remember, guys, this is one of my favorite desert scenes. There's no texture. There's no plants. There's only two colors and three brushes. It is not a hard one for sure. And you're going to have a whole lot of fun. Like how we come down here, it's like a skateboard ramp. 
gotta turn it, gotta go crazy. Gotta go crazy. Let's get a little bit more of our black paint. Just a little bit. That's all we got. That's why I'm not showing you me loading it because it's literally into the pile of black. Pull it out a little bit just to a little onto the brush. And maybe we're gonna come back here. Maybe we have like another little projection right there. Really make it a little bit darker in here. There we go. Slide it down. Little bits. Just so it's darker than before and you get these cool little things, right? So that means maybe our path came out like that and then it came back and then it came down again. It's whatever. Or it's all right here. You know what I mean? All here for us just waiting. Waiting and waiting and waiting. I like that though. It comes and pops out right there. A little bit feeds back and the best part is you can literally blend it away with all the other colors that are here because we're only using two. It's only our two colors. Maybe this guy slides up, right? And there's this imaginary little thing until we start to slide our bit this way. And then all of a sudden, there's a little ridge right there in the rock, right? And I'll show you, just like this. Start to take it up. Take this guy, we're pulling it down, we're pulling it to the side. Now with that little line right there, you get this little sandy ridge. It's very cool, very cool. So, just like that, making these guys a little softer, a little ridge. Maybe it was a little flatter and then it started to really climb up. So we just changed the angles a little, right? Until right there, we really swipe up for our little sandy bit of ridge. Very cool. So neat, this little painting, you guys. It's so much fun to do as well. Really dark down here. Now, you can decide whether or not it looks like your little bit of path comes this way or you have another little section or you change what the perspective is. Maybe there's a rock, maybe there's whatever. You know what I mean? What does yours look like when you go to walk up it? That's the, the key. Now we'll come back here and show you. I'm just literally grabbing right out of our little black pile. It all depends on how much paint we put on the brush. And then we can go blend it all out, right? So what if we had over here, our little bit land came out like that. And then we have our last little dark area back in here. There we go, that's cool. Slide this guy, just mixing him back and forth. Slide him up, maybe we'll make the back side over here a little bit darker. With that shadowy area back there, just feeding it from the corner back up to that little ridge. And then we can decide what it looks like. Leave a little bit of light in between. That's gonna help our ridge come to life. If you can just save that little line of light and with these two things pulled in different directions, you got yourself a ridge right there. Got yourself a little ridge. It's a lot more pronounced now, right? Take this guy and just blend it back. All we have is black. And it's literally mixing with the white that's on the canvas already. A little light line right there. A little bit of a ridge. Right? Or maybe this guy. Starts fading off down to the side over here. All depends on how we uh, highlight it or low light it, right? What if we had some more shadows, some deeper darkness back in there? And then it's like we gotta, then we gotta come over the edge of this little lip right here. It'd be very neat. Have our path come through there. And then we walk out. Oh, that's gonna be cool, guys. Very lightly, little things, little rounded flicks coming to our edge. And then you gotta make sure that your, you know, your things go back in there. Very cool. Very cool. A little bit more of our paint. Come down here. Just like that. Little bits on the side off. Pull those guys back. Slide it down the other way. You get cool little details all over the place. Now, out here in the front, it's gotta be darker than everywhere else, especially way down here in our foreground. So just add a little bit more paint. And that's why I always say, if you start with a little bit, you can always add more. If you start with too much, you can never take it away. It's there for goods, right? Just like that cool little bit of that light line. Wicked. We decide what it looks like based off of our little directional swipes. Soften everything down like that. Come on up over here. Grabbing it, pulling it up, right? And then down here, grabbing this guy at this other angle, sliding him down. Then I'm going to work backwards from the side of the canvas. Just like that, guys. Wicked cool. Wicked cool. Now that thing comes out and starts getting darker and darker and darker. Very neat, if you ask me. Then we're going to come back and highlight it. Oh, there's a little bit right there. A projection. A little projection. There we go. Come down around the edge. You can always go back and do different things. 
darken it up a little bit, but you gotta leave those light areas, right? You don't wanna make it too dark. Make it too dark, or if you have all your little dark areas touched too closely, then it's not gonna be good. A little bit darker. That's the problem too, you can only go so dark until you can't get it any darker, right? So you have to start with less paint. Less paint on the brush. Come back in here. Just coming back in, softening it down in our little angles. We decide what stays bright, what stays dark, what slides. All right, you can slide all this brightness all the way to the edge if you wanted to. Or slide the darkness back. All up to you. Totally up to you. Now I'm going to wash off my brush. I'll wash off the old white brush over here with the white paint on it. Beat the devil out of that brush. I'm going to load it back up with some white. Then we're going to go come in with some highlights, right? Now, a little bit of white onto the brush again. If you add too much, can't ever take it away. Come back in here. Just cover over small areas of our, our bit of that little black line, right? Again, we're going to be sliding it off. So it doesn't have to be the most perfect thing. Don't want it to be too bright. You can always go back in and add more little bits of our darkness, but it's like that. It'll get bigger and bigger and bigger as it comes towards us. Let me turn it up this way. My thing over here starts coming down. Leave our little bits, little things, they start coming over there, and our whole little area over here. Very cool. Then we decide what it goes and looks like, right? It looks like, a, well, like we're doing waves. It really looks like, that's how I liken it anyway, like we're doing waves. And you guys know how I love waves. Okay, taking the same brush. I haven't washed this big two-inch brush yet, so it's got all that dark color on it and a stray bristle. Now we're going to go very softly. Remember, three brushes two colors, three hairs and some air right here. Very soft, very soft. Unless you want it to grow. If you want it to grow a little bit more, push a little bit harder, right? Come back in, make our little angles, nice and crisp. Dang, very cool guys. That's a neat one. That is a neat one. We really wanna get the back side of our little ridge dark though. There we go, a little bit darker of our paint. And again, you gotta work at it until you like it, right? It's not up to anybody else except for you and then what it looks like. There's a good little ridge. Pull that guy off this way. Slide our little bit back up in. Just like that. Soft little areas, got dark areas, got light areas, got everything in here, guys. And there's no texture at all. It's all brushed out so softly, so cool. Right? Take these guys and bring it down. That little bit of light back there it doesn't have to be so big. Bring it down just so you have a little bit. Ooh, look at that. So cool, guys. That's wicked. I'll take a little bit more darkness out here because this bright spot just looks kind of funky to me for whatever reason. There we go. Now we can see it kind of going out, getting all crazy. Would you guys walk out on this thing with me? I don't know that I would. It looks a little spooky out here, like we might lose our way. And I don't know if I want to be out there alone, guys. Looks like a dinosaur is going to swoop down and eat us. So. Remember, you get to name this painting, and you could possibly buy it if you wanted it. You go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. If you just wanted to name it, then start throwing the names in the description. And we're going to come up with a name for this one. You guys get to choose. It's going to be awesome. Right? And if it gets purchased, the buyer gets to pick the name. And if it doesn't, then Paint With Josh gets to pick the name. And I love picking the names. Very cool. You guys have such a great imagination. And I, 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 I just gave up naming paintings long ago because... After you do so many, how do you continue doing it? You know what I mean? Well, I'm doing a little bit of darkness, a little bit of light. There was too much light. Uh, too much, yeah, too much light right there. So we had to put some dark in there. Just add that little bit. That's it. So start coming up with a name for this painting, guys. We're going to get brighter and brighter as we come towards us. All right, come down here a little bit. Brighter and brighter. More paint. There we go. Very cool. More paint, less pressure, right? Less pressure, because we want it to stay bright. Bing, bang, boom, you guys, it turned out fantastic. Thank you to all the guys over at Finley Toyota today for hooking me up with just an awesome little ride. I love it, and uh, it's really gonna help with the events. It's gonna help with all sorts of stuff, even with grocery. I already put some groceries in it, so we know it's grocery tested, Paint and Josh approved. And it, uh, it's really nice. It rides like a little dream. It's just lovely. So, three colors, three brushes. You know what? We have to add one more brush. 
But let's not. Let's just say we didn't, right? This is a little liner brush. This is a little teensy tiny one. And what we're going to do is take our little teeny tiny liner brush and we're going to come in. Let's do it over here. We're going to add our little signature first. Put our little JK in there and then we'll go add the family. Got to add the family. And remember, if this one gets purchased during the show, you guys can add your family into it with me somewhere. And I'll also frame it for you right here, live in front of everybody. You get two choices of frames. So, if you purchase this one, you get two choices of frames. I'll get the frames out right now, and I'll show you which ones we got. Now, I'm taking a little of my odorless mineral spirits, our OMS, our cleaner for the brush, and we put it into the black pile. Now we're going to come up here. Add the old Paint the Josh family way off here in the distance. Couple little birds flying through. Very cool. Flying through the scene, right? Just like that. Now, those birds are more famous than me, I think. I was saying that the other night on TikTok. I think it was last night. Saying how people would yell at me if I don't put the birds in the scene. They don't care about me. They don't care about who's painting it. If the birds aren't in the scene, they just start getting angry. So, let's see your names, guys. What do you want to name this painting as I finish the sides right here? Just like this. And that way the buyer won't have to purchase, uh, won't have to buy a frame. You can literally take it out and it's already going to be ready. Look, we're going to a little bit of like dark little cloud just to add a little bit of darkness back there, right? A little bit of mist, a little bit of something. Maybe it's connected to that cloud up there. Just kind of flows in, starts to mix in with our land. Very soft. Pulling it to the side, not trying to spread it. Not trying to make it blend in, just having it trying to be mysterious, mysterious back there, right? With a bunch of mist. Oh, yeah. Just like that. Very cool. Now we don't know if the thing continues on. Maybe it curves back in between these guys. Very neat. No matter what. So tell me what your, uh, what the title, what do you want to name this guy? And then we're going to come up here. We're going to finish the top. I'm going to get up on my tippy toes to reach this guy. To finish the top, and then we're going to spin it around and sign it. So let's pull it down like this. Get the top edge. This is what the best part about doing a black and white scene is you don't even have to change colors of your brush. It's all the same color. It just depends on how much you push on it, right? How much pressure, how much paint we're chucking onto it. Very cool. Now we're gonna spin it around. This is number 787. So if you went over to the Paint With Josh store and you use the search bar over there and you typed in the word TikTok or number 787, this painting will pop up. There's obviously not a photo for it because we're doing it right now and uh, haven't had a chance to take a picture because it wasn't finished, right? We just started it. So, let's come over here. I'm going to do the signature. It was so funny, the guy at, uh, when I was buying the car today, he's like, okay, sign here, initial here, sign here, initial here. And he's like, he goes, you initialed everything. I go, no, I signed everything. That's my signature. There is no difference between the initial and the signature. That's it. I was like, so actually, if you want to look at it like that, I, I either initialed everything or I signed everything, or I did both. I did it in duplicate, right? Which is funny. He was like, oh, okay, right on, right on. 787, man. I can't believe we painted 787 paintings. Okay, let's come back here and we'll pick a title. What are we going to name this one, guys? Oh, what kind of easel do I have? This is the, uh, what's it, the Vizwin. I looked for the Meden one, and uh, it's a little medium size. It holds two canvases. I've got the little video about it, and... Uh, yeah, Peggy, I, we got a new car today. It was amazing. Like I literally, you know, you guys, literally you guys made it possible for me to, you know, be where I am at today. I, I live in a house. The artwork pays for the place that I live. It pays to feed me. It pays for the new car. I'm overly grateful. I, 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 I don't even know what to say. Like I'm going to start crying. It's insane. The amount of of support and love that I get from all of you guys. And it's not just the people that buy paintings. Don't even think about it like that. It's the people that comment and share and send it to their grandma or send it to their grandkids. And be like, hey, watch this guy. He's really cool. Makes a little thing. Sometimes he's funny, mostly burping, but <laughs> sometimes he's funny and uh, he does a really good job. So I love you guys. Thank you for helping me share it and just helping me improve my life enough where I could, I could get a car to you. It's insane. We tell him, I was like, yeah, uh, right out of the art account here. Like, there's enough money in it. Thank God, right? My goodness, you guys are just so awesome. I just love you. So let's give me a title, guys, for this painting. Solitude, Whisper Valley. Thank you, Peggy. Oh, it's just, yes, it's going to be awesome. We're going to do the gallery show in June. I like Solitude. That's a good title over there, Lisa Strickland. Atkins. Solitude for this one. 
All right, guys. Well, we painted this one on 5, 26, 23. And everyone's going to go over to paintwithjosh.com and check out. We've got the schedule listed over there. So if you're wondering when I go live, how many days in a row I paint, what's happening, go over there to paintwithjosh.com. We've got the schedule. And uh, then from there, you can go to every other place. You can go to the Etsy store. You can go find me on YouTube. Come back here to Facebook, over to TikTok, find me on Instagram. I'm all over the place. And boom, just like that, guys. That is a pretty little black and white painting. Man, it's nice and big on an 18 by 24. Fantastic. So uh, I'm excited. That I can't wait to see your guys' versions of this painting. It turned out awesome. I hope you think so as well. And uh, until I see you guys again next time, we might be live a little bit later on TikTok. Maybe not. I'm sort of exhausted from... Uh, you guys know what it's like going to sit at a car dealership for like six hours. Oh, it's just tiring doing nothing, right? But uh, yeah, we might come back later on on TikTok. And if we do, I'll of course film it and then we'll put it out somewhere. And uh, yeah, I just want to thank you guys. Literally, you sitting here watching has helped me improve my life so much that I can survive off of my art. It's, I, I, it's hard to even say. It blows my mind. Literally blows my mind. So I love you guys so much. Thank you for your continued support and, um, you know, the shares and the likes and the taps and the love and just love you. So from me to you, I love you. Take care. Have the rest of a good day. And bow. Get out of here. Did a full 360. That was cool.